In the stunning and remote highlands of Scotland, expectant mums can face harsh challenges. You struggle for signal out here, then, don't you? I'll try again. I don't really fancy being on the other end of his horns. With hospitals few and far between, Hi, Shelley. the midwife's role here is key. Feel free to move me any time. <laughs> I'm thinking this will come on thick and fast. No, it'll start mild. They form close and special bonds with all their mums-to-be. That's very rewarding, being part of this amazing experience of somebody's life. She's there by their side, all the way to delivery. Will you just let your body do what it needs to do? She needs to think on her feet. We're going. I'm coming with you rise to some extraordinary challenges. Unfortunately, we can't get a plane due to adverse weather conditions. And sometimes face handing her expectant mums over to hospital-based midwives when things don't go to plan. <coughs> but for her, it's the best job in all the world. Part of the job, it's so lovely getting a wee cuddle at the end of it. She is the Highland midwife. <laughs> It's a privilege to be at such a special moment, even after 30 odd years. <laughs>Midwife Hazel helps a mum with a serious needle phobia that might threaten her birth. There's still going on to put a needle on my arm when I go to labour. Oh, no. Don't like <laughs> Midwife Val has to send her mum for a scan, leaving her home birth at risk. Now it's not quite as straightforward as you'd hoped. And midwife Sheena has to help her mum at a critical moment. Where well, you're not going to push too hard, so that's the point to listen really carefully to me, OK? In the heart of the Highlands lies Inverness. Midwife Hazel is part of a small team of community midwives based at Ragmore Hospital. Here, so Hi, are you? you? Not bad, not bad. Cup of tea? Oh, yes. Perfect. Hello, Community Midwives Office. Hazel speaking. This morning, Hazel is off to meet a local mum well known to the midwives. This is Sheena's seventh baby. Her youngest is uh, a year old. You know, she's a very, very busy mum. I've offered her home visits throughout this pregnancy and hopefully she finds that just uh, a little bit easier than having to traipse down to see me with her brood of children. I think seven is just enough. It's a nice wee number, isn't it? Yes! Yeah. Yeah, sir, because this yeah. night is not a girl. <laughs> Stay-at-home mum Sheena and her partner George, a chef, have enjoyed all seven of her pregnancies. You get the same feeling, the same rush. Does it change? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. But this will be number seven and that's... Number seven and that's... We're staying at number seven. Final. Yes. No more children. No more. Hey. No. Hello, hello. Morning. I'm only putting this down because I'm such a mucky pop. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is. And it's nice and regular. Yeah. And if the old wives' tale's correct, it's a boy. Yeah, going with so the you'll noise, be glad. It? <laughs> yeah. It's all going just the way it should be. OK. That's supposedly your bum. Thank you. <laughs> I wish it was that small. <laughs> but Hazel was Sheena's midwife for baby number six, and she knows that birth left Sheena really fearful about one part of her hospital experience. I don't want that needle again in my arm. I have actually never in my career come across someone as scared of needles. You're a true needle phobic. That just puts shivers. I'm sweating already thinking about it. Yeah. I can't And do I it. suppose that already adds to the, the stress yeah. and it could also it's affect the, worry of it the is... way that you labour as well. Yeah. If they're going to bring you in during the day, I'll come and hold your hand. Yeah. I'll come and hold your hand. Come with me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Big one. <laughs>
<laughs> she has to be one of the worst needle phobics that I've had ever encountered in my career. She doesn't even have her ears pierced, there's no tattoos, there's no nothing. She is that scared of needles. God love her. On the banks of the River Don in Aberdeenshire lies the town of Afford. Here Val has been a midwife for over 25 years. Today, she's on her way to visit a mum who has set her heart on a home birth. But hopefully all the ice will go. Well, that's good that all the snow's melting. So we're off now to see Kate, and she's got a lovely little family, um, a little boy and two girls. And the boy, actually, was a planned home birth. Mama, Where was it going to? Oh, oh. What do you say, girls? Wow, we. Oh, Poppy. That's beautiful. Last night you said it's all very nice having three, but it feels like the house needs a baby. <laughs> yes, I think um, I've always wanted a large family. She's an absolute wonderful mum. Keeps herself fit, and I think that's how she copes with um, being a mum of three active and lively children. Um, and Zach was actually born at home. Kate's really hoping to do the same again with this baby. But midwife Val has been monitoring Kate closely, as recent scans have shown that the baby is growing small. Hello. Hi. Hi, hi Kate. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. My hands are cold. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So there's a little foot over there. And there's that baby's head there. A small baby could make Kate's dream of a home birth more difficult. So tell me then what your thoughts are and what the plan is that you um, agreed with the hospital. I wanted to wait till the growth scan and right. then I think that will give us a better indication. I have started to make preparation for the home birth, the equipment and the gases and the drugs. But next Friday is going to be kind of D-Day, isn't yes. it? If the growth of the baby is starting to drop off, then that's not reassuring. Yes. slightly unnerving, not exactly knowing whether there is a problem or whether is there isn't a problem. Um, you know, we've not had to experience this in any of the other pregnancies. Small babies don't actually um, withstand the stress of labour so well. If it's small, it would be wise to be in a hospital situation where they can monitor the baby's heartbeat continuously and then they could intervene if there was any signs of this baby getting into distress. Just have to wait and see what next Friday's scan brings. Peterhead, on the east coast of Scotland. A midwife-led unit here helps healthy mums have their babies locally. Sheena is one of the small team of midwives trying to achieve that. Passing on knowledge to student midwives is part of the job. It is a good way of describing labour for them. They get a good laugh as well if I burst the balloon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been 26 years a midwife, uh, so I've delivered a lot of babies in that time. I can honestly say that everyone's a miracle, you know. It is a special. I think especially when a small clinic like this, you do get to know the, the mums really well. Bye. Today we're going to see Yasmin. She is 37 weeks in her second pregnancy. Ready, steady, steady go! go. <laughs> that was really good. In her first labour, she uh, went to Peterhead Maternity Unit. And when things didn't work out as Yasmin hoped, Sheena was there for her. I was with her and she unfortunately had a blue light ambulance because her labour was very slow um, and she ended up delivering in the consultant unit in Aberdeen. She had quite a bad tear during the delivery. Well, we'll see if we can find the swans. Yeah. yeah. Yasmin and husband Neil haven't forgotten the experience. 
I remember you going into the, the ambulance and saying, whatever happens, um, save the baby, <laughs> which is quite Probably daunting, the, the to morph, be honest. The morphine talking. It's a bit scary, actually, for being the first time, to be honest. Where's the fishies at? <gasps> Can you see the fish? The experience has left Yasmin determined to have a local birth if she can. I think that she has been thinking about um, her chances of being transferred again. And I'm going to have a chat to her about that. Hello. Hello, Yasmin. How are you? Oh, hello, Ruby. Can you say hello? Hello. Hello. Blood pressure's good, as always. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yeah. I've been into Peterhead and I've seen all of the new birth and suites and they just look amazing. Almost like a little hotel like a in a way. Yeah, yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. Everyone, I think, would if they could have their babies there, would yeah. have them there. Yeah. Peterhead is for um, low-risk ladies yeah. like yourself. Um, however, you had... Um, the tear last time. So if it happens again, um, you would need to be transferred to Aberdeen again. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. Aberdeen, I thought, just because it's obviously 40 minutes to an hour away, I'm scared yeah. because everyone said your second baby kind of comes quicker. Come quicker yeah. So I don't want baby to be born halfway there or whatever. Yes, so. on, on the road. You don't want no. the baby to be born on the road. Okay then, Yasmin, you, you take care. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, you. Bye Ruby. Bye, Bye Ruby. Bye. Everyone, apart from me, keeps telling me that things all go better this time and quicker this time, so fingers crossed, I'd like to have baby in Peterhead. The most likely thing that would stop her from delivering in Peterhead would probably be if she goes past her date. In Inverness, Midwife Hazel is going to see her mum-to-be, Sheena. Her contractions have started, but she's not yet in full labour. Her due date is actually this Saturday, and she's been having contractions on and off all weekend. Hello, you. <laughs> So you're still here? Still here. Oh no. Sore and uncomfy. But I actually thought that you were going to go into labour. So did I. On Friday. I actually downloaded a, a contraction counter on my phone. Did you? Yeah, they were that bad. So it tells you when oh, you were getting them how long they lasted for and what they were in between. See, they were coming and coming and coming. Oh wow. They'll come for a good two, three hours and then they'll, they'll get stronger and then they just stop. With it being baby number seven, this womb is just that wee bit more stretched. And so when you're having the Braxton and Hicks, it just sort of like has to contract. It's stronger, sort it's, of thing. It's stronger because mm -hmm. it's got more to... It's... And will they be doing anything? Yes, of course yeah. they'll be doing. This will be helping the baby get into, into position. Doing you know, so it will be. It's That's all okay doing then. something. It's all <laughs> positive. Doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fine then. It definitely will be doing something. As this is Sheena's seventh baby, Hazel knows that there are precautions they must take to protect her during delivery. But these involve what Sheena fears most, needles. Has the consultant spoken to you about getting IV access? No. You are definitely in that high-risk category. Because it's baby number seven, so They're you know, still going to want to put a needle in my arm when I go to Yeah. It's because you're of a higher oh. risk for having a, what we call postpartum haemorrhage. Oh, it's just a needle. So we would be looking for you to have that IV access just in case you do bleed. There are drugs that we can give straight away into that IV access to clamp your womb oh. down and to stop that bleeding and potentially save your oh. life. I don't like them. I know you don't like them. I know you don't like them. It was a wee bitty 
tricky, you know. I've, I just felt so sorry for Sheena, you know. I'm telling her that she needs to have IV access. And her poor wee face, and we even, we even had the tears. I nearly started crying myself. But you can't not have these difficult conversations. It's scary now that we've got needles. So now we've got to think how we're going to manage it all. Can you put that into there? Back in Aberdeenshire, mum-to-be Kate, desperate to give birth at home, is about to have an important scan. In her case, the issue is whether the baby is too small. Well, that's it. At the community midwife unit, her midwife Val remains hopeful. If the baby's growth is good, then Kate may still be in a position where she considers the home birth that she's been planning right from the beginning of this pregnancy and that she enjoyed so much the last time with her last little boy, Zach. We feel quite positive. We feel that Val's quite positive about the whole pregnancy still, so um, that's really good. Kate has brought her youngest children for the scan at Aberdeen Maternity Hospital. We're going to go and see baby now. Sonographer Lauren will carry out a full growth scan which will measure the size and position of the baby. We'll just do a full growth check again today, okay. check your baby's estimated size, we'll plot that into relation to the last scans and the doctor will review that upstairs. And lovely heart beating away there just at the top of the chest. Can you see that okay? Yes. So I'm just going to start just by measuring your baby's head to begin with. If the growth is not good, then it will probably be that the consultant will recommend induction of labour, which is a whole new ball game for Kate because it's intervention into the pregnancy. Kind of scan equivalent, and um, that's in about 36 weeks, three days, and we're 38 and four. The scan shows that Kate's baby is growing two weeks behind schedule. Baby. Baby, your mum is to me. Oh, oh baby. Kate's dream of a home birth is hanging in the balance as the consultant decides. I'm going to go for induction and I'm going to try and start on Sunday, but we might go before then, but I'm going to speak to when we get home. Um, it will need to be a hospital birth so that they can monitor the baby's heartbeat during the induction process. In Inverness, Sheena's contractions have worsened and she's come to Ragmore Hospital with her sister Helen. Still having oh. these irregular contractions. Yeah, they're a pain in the bum. Although she is having contractions, her labour is not progressing. In order to move things along, Sheena is offered the option of being induced. But when midwives try to prepare her, her fear of needles takes over. <sighs> Midwife Hazel is out seeing other mums, but she knows how difficult Sheena will find this situation. Sheena is needle phobic, so it's not going to be easy and I anticipate that she might actually become quite upset. Should I pop some up the side as well? In case... No, I don't want it up the side. I don't, do you want, want to do it the other hand as well, no, just in I case? I don't want it. I know you don't. <sighs> Sheena's sister Helen has seen this reaction many times before. We only get one chance to do it, okay? The less stressful it's going to be. Okay? You want it in the back of your hand, that's fine. You don't want it in your wrist, that's fine. But why don't we do both hands so we've got an option? Okay? That's it. No, I don't want it. With Sheena now 10 hours in hospital, 
partner George has left looking after the children to be by her side. Just nervous. I'm hoping that she didn't take the injection. So George has finally arrived at the hospital to give me a bit of a break. We've been at the hospital now for 10 hours. It's been a long day. And no matter how much I say to her, you have to say, just do it and it'll be over and done with. She can't do that. She knows she has to. She knows that if she doesn't, she risks herself and the baby. But she, she can't, she, she can't say just do it. After 12 hours, Sheena is allowed to go home. She's got needle phobia and it's just stressing her out and it's just making things worse. We're getting to go home and come in daily for checks until he arrives. It's early morning in Peterhead and midwife Sheena is on her way to see her mum-to-be Yasmin. I'm fine, how are you? All right, yeah. It was a bit blown by the wind. Oh. <laughs> keep squeezing. Keep squeezing. And then we put this on here and we listen to Mummy's heartbeat. Midwife Sheena knows Yasmin wants to give birth in her local midwife-led unit in Peterhead. You feel that? Yeah. He's, he's kicking the monitor. But she knows how unpredictable the start of labour can be. Do you see what it was? OK, now I did bring with me this little leaflet, which um, explains a bit a membrane sweep. OK. It's an internal examination, and if the cervix is open, we put finger into the cervix and try to stretch it a little bit. That releases the hormone that should get you into labour. Neil's told me to go for it because he knew how quickly it brought a <laughs> little labour last time, so he said go for it. Sometimes it works straight away and some people need more than one. I know if I need anything, I can just call. Yeah, so just give us a call. Call the midwife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's another show. <laughs> well, everything seems to be um, progressing well. Everything certainly seems to be on track for a uh, delivery in the midwife unit. In Inverness, Sheena is back in hospital. After seven days of contractions, the midwife team have decided that it's time for her baby to be born. Being the seventh baby, I thought it would be a lot easier by now, but it seems to get difficult every time. God, they broke my waters. They broke your waters? No, they've done it. That's what they did. If this doesn't work, then Sheena's only option is to be induced, which will involve needles. There's a needle involved. It's a very large one. She's not keen to get it in. With 30 expectant mums to look after, midwife Hazel is out in the community, but her mind is very much back in the hospital with Sheena. You know, if you were to talk about needles or injections or blood tests, she literally sweats and uh, gets very anxious and her heart rate increases. All of which can be dangerous for the baby. Sheena, keen to avoid this, is still trying to encourage the baby out naturally. She felt a wee bit upset, so... She just wants the baby out, and that's it. It's just... The labour pains are not coming strong enough. The contractions are coming. We just need them to build up now. Hopefully this will work. That's my move things along. I keep bouncing. After two hours, 
Sheena's hard work starts to pay off and full labour begins. That's it, I'll just rub my back, right into the back like that. Squeeze, it's like bread, mm. needing it. Sheena's needle phobia also means that she is refusing all pain relief during labour and is relying only on gas and air. Don't they feel really pushy, Sheena? Mm-hmm. Coming again, just go for it. Give us a good big push and get this over with. Good girl, and again, go for it. You can do it, don't be scared. Perfect. Come on, don't be scared, Sheena. No, don't do nothing. Not do anything. Not do anything. No. Not do anything. Oh. Oh. Is he coming? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Small push to let the nose out. Small push. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> 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 Amazingly, after having contractions on and off for seven days, the baby has been delivered in less than two hours. No pain relief whatsoever. How proud are you? Brilliant. <laughs> Midwife Hazel has just got back to the hospital and worried about Sheena has come to find her. Hello. This is absolutely gorgeous. Job to ten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Looks like Kai. Yeah. How did it go and end up? Yeah. Well, no pain just relief. Just in here. Just went quick. I noticed that there's no ventral. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No. Just a wee bit of skin, skin contact. Yeah, I should find out he's a little bit. He's definitely bigger than Cassie anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I died this year, don't worry. Earlier in Peterhead, midwife Sheena warned mum-to-be Yasmin that there might be an obstacle in the way of her local birth. The most likely thing that would stop her from delivering in Peterhead would probably be if she goes past her date. And Yasmin is now already four days over her due date. So midwife Sheena has sent her back for one last go. So if this week today doesn't work, then tomorrow I'll be induced. Sheena's colleague Donna will do today's sweep. So Sheena's your midwife? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so you're four days past your date. Sheena did your first sweep. Um, do you realise Sheena is renowned for her sweeps? Oh, no. <laughs> hey, you just hope your shell back. Let's not try to get this baby out so I can give you a go again this time. Yeah. And hopefully have Fuck baby time. here. Right, so you've had the sweep, so you know the drill. Yeah. Do you realise if this baby comes tonight, I'm going to be a superhero and everybody's going to be <laughs> coming to Peterhead for sweeps? Righty-ho. OK. Yep. <laughs> I know, it's not very pleasant, isn't it? Ruin. Right, that is probably a really good sweep. OK. okay thank you. Right, we'll just lie a wee minute, OK? Didn't go up too quick just now. It's kind of the last ditch attempt. Last night when I went home, I had a curry, I had a hot bath, tried everything that anyone has suggested and still nothing. So this is the last attempt. Within six hours of her sweep, 
Yasmin is back in the midwife unit. You're doing fine. Where midwife Sheena is waiting for her. Okay, good to go. So Yasmin, how often are the contractions coming? Yeah, you've been typing them. Um, contractions has been about every three minutes average. Take a nice big deep breath in for me. And a long slow blow out. Oh. That's it. Really go. Good. In Aberdeenshire, fourth-time mum Kate is a long way from the home birth she has been dreaming of. Have you got to come a distance? I can't remember where yes. you from. Yes, we're coming from Afford. Midwife Val has advised her to speak directly with the hospital as the delivery day approaches. I'm not worried, I'm excited. It's just leaving the children. But I'm opening oh, this baby. That's good. Um, it's just leaving the children, but... Kate is transferring into Aberdeen Maternity Hospital. We've got a wee bit of a walk, we're going all the way to room six. <laughs> in you go. Kate is just in labour ward uh, today to be induced because baby's on the smaller side um, and just so we can observe baby a little bit closer. Just keep your arm there and just keep looking at Pete and I'm going to start the drip. So the drip is just a hormone drip that started at a very s slow rate um, that is increased and will increase the contractions. Kate is experiencing constant contractions. Unlike natural labour, where contractions come in waves, Induction means there is no respite from the pain. You're in the throes, aren't you? Yeah. After four hours, Kate is finally about to meet her baby. Okay. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Big breaths. I can't! I'm going to push! It's a little boy. Here he comes. One oh, beautiful baby! Congratulations. Look at him. You did it. Oh. Yeah. Did you? you hold knowing. You hold yeah. knowing. <clears throat> oh, look, he's looking at you. <laughs> yeah. He's thinking Cedar Edward. Just because it's a nice name. Obviously, it would have been lovely to have Val, who we've been with from the beginning. But yeah, it's very exciting to have him here. Oh, wow. Oh, that was the hardest. <laughs> Peterhead, Yasmin is getting the birth she wants, even if it doesn't feel like that for her or husband Neil. Is this an okay position for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aware that Yasmin suffered a tear last time, midwife Sheena knows that managing the birth is crucial. You're doing a fabulous job. Remember we talked about the bit at the end where you're not going to push too hard. So that's the point to listen really carefully to me, OK? And now... Oh, I'm pushing OK right now. You're pushing excellently right now, OK? Mm -hmm. And just that last little bit of when it's coming, I don't want too much force because we want to try and... 
avoid the tear if we can, okay? You're doing absolutely fine. You just listen to what your body's saying, okay? Coming down very nicely. Well done. Keep that going, Yasmin. That's good. Good. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yes. Yeah, some gas. That's it. It's not them slipping back this time. Well done. Say yes. And again. Stop. Little stop. It's burning though. I know it's very stingy. This bit, okay. In Peterhead Delivery Unit, midwife Sheena is helping Yasmin through the final stages of labour. Keep going, keep going. I'd say yes. One big push, that's a girl. Oh, thank you, baby. That's his head just about out. A wee push for his chin. Oh, yes, yes. A wee push for going to wait for the next contraction. And then we'll have a little baby out. Well done. yes. Keep pushing for me. Oh, Come on, keep pushing. Oh, that's a girl. Well done. Here he oh, is. Yeah. yeah, you're fine, aren't you? Daddy, we're just going to cut in this middle bit of the other okay? Well done, Daddy. Now then. This is his heart. Oh. From his auntie Sheena. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's a lovely big boy. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, it was a pleasure. It really was a pleasure. <sighs> What's coming in for? Oh, yes, it's always <laughs> worth coming in to catch your baby. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. We did it between us. Teamwork. Just being my midwife since the beginning and was there right up until baby the one. very end, so it was just really, really good. Like, I'm so appreciative to have had her with me. She did absolutely fantastic. And it's always wonderful delivering your own ladies. Seeing them all the way through the pregnancy and then delivering them. It's fantastic. Best part of the job. Midwife Val, like all midwives, visits her mums for 10 days after birth. Usually, that visit is a happy, joyful occasion, but sometimes they can be more sombre. In the case of Kate and baby Cedar, seven days after birth, things took a turn for the worse. On the Friday, everything seemed to be going fine with baby Cedar. There was no real concerns, but then on the Monday, his temperature was quite low and also he wasn't as alert and responsive as he had been. Kate and baby Cedar were airlifted to Glasgow, where he had to have an emergency operation to correct a heart defect. By the time we got into hospital, he was hypothermic at 32.9 degrees, right. and he was mottled grey. And I said to Peter that we were losing him because I couldn't warm his hands up, and his breathing started being, I don't know, quite... It's just different, right. and I just didn't feel that he was with, with us. Hello, Sita. Hello, darling. There he is, and he's such an alert baby boy. Yes, he really is. Still, yes. Yeah. Oh, he's got a lovely heart. little moist mouth. The feeding's going really well. 
Yes, so have you got all these weights in your red book? Yes. Oh, that's yes. good then. That's so good to see him looking so well now. Yeah, he's feisty. <laughs> feisty. <laughs> bye. Yeah, see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. Thank you. He looks really good today. He's very alert, he's feeding well, and his weight's coming up beautifully. But it's just so good to see him back and just part of the family and everything's going so well again now. I am doing fine. We're gonna have days, good days and bad days, I think, still. But um, anyway, it's good to have Cedar here. In Inverness, midwife Hazel is off to visit mum of seven, Sheena, for the final time. I haven't seen Sheena um, since she had Hamish, so I'm really looking forward to seeing her and looking forward to getting a, a wee cuddle off of Hamish. She'll just go in, George. Yeah, brilliant. It's lovely to put a wee face to the bump. <laughs> Oh, Hamish, look at you. Oh, he's absolutely oh, gorgeous. So, it all worked out oh, okay. Yep, yeah. no needles involved, nothing. It was heaven. <laughs> That's what you wanted. But we're not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, this is, this no, is the no. last baby. We're having number seven. That's it. That's it. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> It's bittersweet, you know, it's, um, Sheena's lovely and she's such a lovely person, an amazing woman, you know, seven babies and she just takes it all in her stride. Right Hazel, bye. See you, bye bye. And that's me, on to the next visit. <laughs> on to the next visit and I'm sure there'll be many more pregnant women out there that'll be looking for a midwife. <laughs> Midwife Sheena is on her way to visit Yasmin and baby Freddy for the first time since she delivered him. Hello, Ruby. Hi. Hello, can we come in? Can you come and let Sheena in? Hello, young man. Oh, he's grown. Okay. You're lovely, aren't you? It was so close to being, having to be induced. So for everything to kind of get moving the and, then, yeah, and yeah. then to go into labour and for everything to go mm. so well, yeah, I'm really, really happy. And I'm chuffed for you. <laughs> for me, it's really nice to deliver my own ladies who I've seen from the very beginning of their pregnancy all the way through and we've chatted and I know what you want for yeah. labour and um, that's important for me as it is for you. I just thought I was going to cry there <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Next time, midwife Pam tries to help a mum-to-be whose baby is now much larger than expected. This is quite a big baby. The baby's bigger than they would have hoped at this stage. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. Midwife Claire keeps a close eye on a mum-to-be who has Ooh. MS. Any headaches? I have been having headaches. On the weekend, I had bloodiness. Okay. And midwife Alison has to act quickly when one mum's blood pressure becomes dangerously high. That's reading really quite high. The hospital, they'd like you to go in mm -hmm. today. Oh.